Dr. K.K. Mahamad, thank you very much indeed. Let's talk about the archaeology of Ayodhya. The first excavation was done by Alexander Cunningham, who is supposed to be the father of Indian archaeology. Could you tell me what did he find in that uh, survey or excavation that he carried out in the late 19th century? Ayodhya may mainly char excavations away. It was first one was Alexander Cunningham, and that was the period of 1861, 1864, 1863. He had an excavation of the greater Ayodhya. Pura jo Ayodhya hai, to usme he had many of uh, he specifically mentions about uh, Janam Bhumi, that is number one. Then it was equally an important place of Jains also, and also Buddhists also. So he gives a very larger picture of the entire archaeology of Ayodhya area. The second excavation is the BHU, that is Banaras Hindu University, ke, Professor A.K. Narayanam Sahib ne kiya tha. And then the third excavation was carried out by uh, Professor B.B. Lal. And I was a member of that team. And the fourth excavation, as per the direction of the Honorable Court, Honorable High Court of Lucknow, Dr. B. R. Mani, he carried out the excavations. And these four important excavations were And in all these things, and even before that also, I mean, the area, even before that also, we have got certain important evidences that it was the Janam Bhumi of, I mean, traditionally believed because, you know, you could not prove it scientifically at that time, but there were certain indications that it was the Janam Bhumi of the place, of uh, Sri Ram. Dr. K.K. Muhammad, let's start from the beginning. What Alexander Cunningham found in, in Ayodhya and what were, what was his, his assessment? No, he, even before him, uh, the whole area was, uh, one is literary references are there. For example, if you go to Aine Akbari, Aine Akbari volume 3rd, it speaks about the the place of Rama's birthplace. And during the Aine Akbari, Abul uh, uh, this Faizi, he specifically says that during the month of Chaitra, a huge gathering takes place. They come, they worship. And also they go to Sarayu River and then they bathe. Then in 1600, that was uh, almost in 1600, this uh, Ayanakari. Then afterwards came William Finch. He was an English traveler. He came in 1611. 1611 means the period of Jahangir. He also speaks about the Janamstan and the, he says Beskian. Beskian means Vishnu. And there was a there is a great temple of Vishnu and people used to worship there. And he speaks only about the worshipping and the puja of the mandir, but not about the namaz of the place. Does he mention the mosque? Uh, he doesn't mention the mosque, but he says the Janamstan. He doesn't speak about the mosque and this thing, that thing, he doesn't speak. But that later people, they speak about it. And then came another, and John Delit. John Delit was uh, actually a Dutch geographer. He also speaks very much about all these things, the puja and other things. And then there was an Austrian Jesuit, Joseph Tafen Taylor. He came in 1767, and he speaks for the first time that it was either destroyed by Babur or by Aurangzeb. And then he also speaks about that pillar, that the Hindu pillar, Hindu temple pillar, which was reused. And then came a letter, number of people, including Alexander Cunningham. Alexander Cunningham, he had, an, of course, a very wide, bigger area because, I mean, he, he did not go specifically to this place. He speaks about this also. And also he goes to other places also, like, I mean, the, many of these Buddhist places also because it was visited by Huyang Sang also. So he speaks about that also. And he was specifically in terms of when he was going on the footsteps of Huyang Sang. So there were some Buddhist, uh, this one remains, and also there were Jain remains also. 
so they will speak about this thing and then on the basis of all this thing the first excavation of dr bb lal that was started but that was also i mean the purpose was not to uh, settle the issue of whether there was a temple below the mosque it was not that purpose at that time that time the purpose was only they wanted to see the cultural continuity and the cultural section of the whole place because it was professor bibilal he had earlier decided about mahabharata because he went to and excavated almost all the places associated with mahabharata like hastinapur hastinapur was the biggest place and then he went to kurukshetra he went to all other five important villages that is indrapat panipat tilpat bagpat and all those places and then he said at all in all these places at the lowest level we have a particular pottery known as pgw that is painted grave and he dated it to almost 1200 bc at that time and it was on the basis of that he decided that this was the uh, hastinapur and then there is an a kind of he correlated with the flood which was mentioned in vayu purana also so that is there and now after settling that one he wanted to take up the issue of ramayana so he wanted to excavate not only ayodhya he has also gone to baradwaj ashram let me interrupt you in fact yeah. i was in ilhaba doing my phd in 1977 and i oh. visited baradwaj ashram at that time but for a kind of a young student there was hardly anything it was all yeah. dust dust and trenches i couldn't understand at that time yeah. but what a professor bb lal found in in ayodhya ayodhya actually number 1 uh before every excavation we go for an exploration exploration means the surrounding area so that you can conductualize the excavation so during this one period we also went and uh, into the, uh, that controversial mosque at that time and it was under lock and key but we introduced that i mean we are the students for the research students so they opened it just for us and then when we saw this the pillars the pillars were the temple pillars reused in the mosque now the question comes now how do you know whether this is a temple pillar mosque pillar or it is a church pillar actually we are basically archaeologists as a students we are basically trained for that one we call it stylistic dating you have many other scientific datings also c14 dating is there you have thermoluminescence dating you have got osl dating you have got many other chemical dating for in dating is there many other chemical dating are there but then there is before that because of all, all those things you need a laboratory but this one you just go see the monument and see the pillars and may, various other components also you can date it on the basis of the styles so for example if you put before me a structure of akbar jahangir shah jahan and aurangzeb i would be even without them I mean, going into scientific dating i would be able to date it uh, this belongs to akbar spirit this belongs to jahangir spirit shah jahan spirit and aurangzeb spirit so on that basis i mean we dated it almost 11th and 12th century you will be having a wider gap 11th and 12th century so that was the first thing and then the second thing when we excavated the western portion and just outside not inside because the mosque was standing at that time i'm talking about 76 77 just outside that is on the western side and also on the other southern side there we got a number of brick pillars this brick pillars were for firmly i mean putting this one that is the pillar pillars the pillar was i mean made of uh, kasorti stone a kind of a variety of granite stone so if you wanted to have firmly footed it you have to have a brick base below that one so this brick bases were excavated that is number 2 and then a number of terracotta small sculptures so these sculptures if it is a mosque area you will not be getting this kind of sculptures because any kind of idol puja is prohibited in islam these are not very big these are only small 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 pieces inside there was certain hindu sculptures were also there but that was defaced 
So you just cannot say, I mean, it belongs to Brahma, Vishnu or Mahesh, what it is, you cannot say. So that it was not an issue also. So it was not highlighted also by Professor, uh, Professor Bibilal. It was not very much highlighted also. But the communist historians, they took advantage out of that one. Because that has not been highlighted. So which means Professor B. Bilal, after the excavation, he did not get anything which is associated with the temples. So there is no question of being it handed over to Hindu community. This issue came up around 1990 because they had a lot of press connections also. And they had a lot of understanding also with the press people with the help of that. When they came out, Professor Lal also had to come out. Firstly, he had to come out now. He has to say, we got a number of materials. All of them have been recorded also. And it is recorded in our photographically also and in our books also, in, in our daily diaries also it is there. And then it became an issue. On the order of Lucknow High Court, the excavation started again in 2003. What were their yes. foundings? Yes, I mean, so in between, that is 1990 and 2003. So at that time I was posted in uh, this place, Tamil Nadu, that is in Madras. So when this controversy was raising, I gave a statement. I said that uh, I was the only Muslim who had participated in that excavation. And I have seen those temple pillars also. I have seen that brick bases also. I have seen that sculptures also. And then I said, I mean, this is on the basis of the archaeological evidence, all these things are there. And then I further added, this is the, the Rama, Rama's birthplace. It is as important for Hindus as Makkah and Medina are for Muslims. So the Muslims, it is not associated with Prophet Muhammad. They have no importance with it and no association with Prophet Muhammad. In Islam, after Prophet Muhammad, it is four caliphs, Hasrat Abu Bakr, Hasrat Umar, Hasrat Usman, Hasrat Ali, they are the more important, I mean, four important people. It has no association with them also. And then again in Islam, after them, there are Sahabas, then there are Awliyas, like the Ajmer, Khaja Mohinuddin Chishti of Ajmer, or Nizamuddin Awliya of Akbar. It is not associated with them also. So Muslim has no association. Its only association is with the king and it is an ordinary mosque. So Muslim should have willingly handed it over to Hindus because for them, this is the birthplace of the old So at that time, it was, I mean, this statement of mine, I was a government servant. I should not have issued such a statement. And because the condition was very volatile at that time. It was not a BJP government also at that time. And nobody knew that one day BJP would come into power also. It was under Shagrati's government. And my probation period was also not over. So they could have dismissed me from the service even without issuing a show cause notice. If I were a permanent, this one, I mean, they have to issue me a show cause notice and other things and then conduct an inquiry. But in this case, even without a show cause notice, even without an inquiry, they could have just dismissed it. And they asked me, I mean, uh, uh, this one, orally they asked me, why did I make such a statement? So I said that I had done it for the good of the, for the welfare of the whole country. I had no personal interest. So now, uh, then, then, I mean, uh, uh, then, they said uh, they would, I mean, they threatened me that they would suspend me. So I just recited. Uh, first of all, when the, my recitation was Loga sam, uh, Samasta Sugino Bhavandu, no, no, Loga Samgrahame Vapi Sambashyan Kartu Marhasi, whatever I had done, done it for the good of the whole country. So then uh, that officer said, Well, Mr. Mohammed, you have done a right thing. This should have been spoken by an archaeologist. And this should have been spoken by a Muslim archaeologist and you have got both the qualification. But there is an instruction that you have to, I mean, action has to be taken against you. So they had a discussion about all these things and then ultimately they did not suspend me, but they 
transferred me from Madras to Goa. So then I joined there. And then this problem, there was no act further action against me. And then this problem again came up in 2003. 2003 means that is during the, that, uh, the High Court gave an order that it should be again excavated. Because you know by that time, 1992, the mosque was uh, demolished by uh, a group of people. Of course, we are against demolishing this kind of historical structures. That should not have been permitted. That was a very wrong step. Even at that time also, we spoke against that one. The demolition was incorrect. But after this one, again, now the as per the direction of the High Court, the excavation was again carried out. So we had got, we had seen 12 pillars at that time. And communist historians said, no, there are no historical remains. There are no this Hindu remains below this one. And this time when the second excavation was carried out, instead of 12, more than 50 pillar bases were excavated. And that too in 17 rows. Which means this was not an ordinary temple. This was a huge and a very magnificent temple. That was number one. And then below the temple, below the Kalasha, there will be Amalka in North Indian temples. This Amalka was excavated from that place. And Amalka, you will not be getting in a residential area, you will not be getting in a bazaar area also. This is a very peculiar architectural feature of a Hindu temple that was excavated from below the mosque. And then Apart from that, this was Pranala, but uh, no, no, then the, the portion of the Shigara portion, Shigara portion is the main portion of a temple. So many architectural members of that Shigara portions were also excavated. And then Pranala, what is a Pranala? Pranala is every day you have to bathe the deity and that Abhishekha Jala that goes through a pranala, it will be always towards north side in Indian temples. It is known as Uttara Vahini. Because wherever the river is taking a turn towards Uttara, that is north, that would be a holy place for us. Example, Vimotri, Yamanotri, Haridwar, Lakshmanjula, Prayag, all these places are Uttara Vahini. So this pranali was also excavated. Again, the importance of the pranali is you cannot have it from a residential area. You cannot have it from a bazaar area also. It's only exclusively a typical feature of an Indian temple. And that way it was a Magara Pranala. Magara means crocodile. A crocodile is a symbol of Hindu, I mean this one, Ganga, river, river Ganga. So Magara Pranali it was. And then 263 idols were excavated from there. These idols would never have been from a mosque and what, or in a monastery. Pardon, sir? What were these idols? I mean, of different animals, different, I mean, associated with Hinduism. Lady figures were there. And especially if it is an Islamic I mean, mosque area, you can never get a lady figure. And there were lady drummers were also there. There were serpents also. I mean, horses, serpents. These are the things you know which you would never get from an Islamic Muslim mosque area. From Muslim area you may get, but from a Muslim area, a mosque area, you will be never getting. So, and then there was an inscription, inscription of 20 lines, which of course was not on the excavation, but when this structure was demolished, and uh, this one inscription, uh, it is known as Vishnu Hari Shilapale. They cast doubt on Vishnu Hari inscription. What did they say about it? No, Vishnu Hari Shila Falaga that says that this has been this uh, temple is devote, I mean, this one dedicated to that Vishnu who has killed Bali. So, who has killed Bali? Sri Ram. And who has killed 10 headed person? Who is 10 headed person? Ravan. And who has killed him? Lord Ram. So, these were the important evidences on the basis of which Dr. B.R. Mani said. 
No, there was a huge temple at that time. And that report was also submitted to the court. And the court completely approved of it. Completely approved of it. There was an effort by the communist historian to say that this should not be accepted because, you know, Dr. Mani, he is a Hindu. So because of that, you know, he would not be impartial. But I, because, you know, I knew about them in their move because I was earlier in Aligarh Muslim University. So I knew the move of this historian, especially the man who was leading it, that was Professor Irfan. And I knew because you know, it was day to day hearing was going on from the month of October, November. And I knew that they would be coming out with some kind of you know, press statement during the month of October and November. And before that, I gave a statement saying that, you know, this, this one, this report submitted by Archaeological Survey of India should be accepted in total because this is not an ordinary report. It is not an ordinary report of the ASA, but the court has instructed Archaeological Survey of India to excavate the place and submit a report. So this is a court commissioner's report. So the, technically the importance of it goes very high. It is a court commissioner's report. It is an impartial report. It should be accepted. And then I, the most crucial thing was because they wanted to create an impression that it was only by Muslims the excavation because we are money is a Hindu and it was by Muslims only the excavation was carried out. I said no, this is Dr. B. R. Mani was the leader, but at the same time there were four co-authors who were Muslims. And then I took the names of those Muslims also. One was Gulam Hussain Khaja. He retired as the director of Arabic and Persian epigraphy from Nagpur. And the second man was A. R. Siddiqui. He retired as the superintendent archaeologist of Agra Circle. The third man was A. A. Hashmi. He retired from Bhopal Circle. And the fourth person, Zulfikar Ali, he is still continuing and he is the superintendent archaeologist of the uh, Chandigarh Circle. So this was almost because nobody knew, nobody other than the Archaeological Survey of India people knew all this thing. So it was almost like a bombshell on this Marxist historians and their programs also, their plans and programs also. In archaeology because it was, the excavation was being carried out. Then one by fourth of the excavators also, excavators mean the workers were also Muslims. So there were, if there are 157 people, 52 people were here, this one Muslim. And then there was some in the committee of that, uh, this one, book committees, uh, 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 this one, leaders were there. Then their lawyers were there. Then there were judges were also there. They were impartial. So all the, and then their experts were, work committee experts were also there. Mm -hmm. So how can you manipulate things? Because you know, this is the way, I mean, they create a kind of hype and then try to mislead the people while doing excavations, why this, uh, these important findings were not bef placed before the nation? No, because you know, it was, I mean, the court had said, I mean, nothing should be placed before the public, nothing should be shown also. And even the report also, that should be with the, this one, with the, with the court only and with the uh, experts only. And they should not speak to the press also, that was also the instruction. And now everything is before the public, anybody can go and see it. The another question is that uh, Babur uh, has almost written a daily diary when we read Babur Nama, almost his, yeah. just uh, even his drinking parties, you know, small, small yes. things. Why did he miss such an important event? Why it, it was not mentioned in, in Babur Nama? So the, the, some pages are missing, some pages and especially for this PD that is missing. So how did it happen? Nobody knows because, you know, there were a lot of, uh, although he had written down so many things, these pages are missing. For which, I mean, we cannot, it was missing from a, I mean, uh, uh, from the very beginning itself when it was translated by Beveridge and other things. Even at that time also it was missing. So almost was three, months of his, uh, three months of his life is not mentioned. Three months? Of not, not, three, three months of his, this one life is not mentioned. I mean, that is not only... I mean, the, this one, I mean, uh, in the Babar Nama, available in India, even in other countries also, it is like that. They have copies in Iran, in Britain, and where else? 
Yes, yes, yes. And it has been translated into, it was originally written in the Chattai language, which was the language of uh, the, the Babar. Because he was from Fargana. Fargana is the modern day Uzbekistan. And then it was during the time of Abdul Rahim Khan Khan. It was he who had translated into Persian. So from Chattai language, it is into Persian language. It was even translated by Abdul Rahim Khan Khan. There was also an attempt to do a radar survey of the area. What that survey found? Yes, that was a that this one ground penetrating radar GPR survey, ground penetrating radar survey. That was before the excavation. It was this ground penetrating radar survey because you know these uh, historians they said that the mosque and below the mosque nothing is there. Not only about the temple, even there is there was no earlier structure at all. That was their argument. So, but historians knew and archaeologists knew, not historians, archaeologists knew that there are various things even below the mosque also. But these people, they don't, didn't want any kind of excavation. That is, the communist historian led by Irfan Adi, they didn't want any, any kind of archaeological excavation. So for that, they, I mean, they tried to stop it in various ways, but that was not successful. And then the GPR survey was conducted. So that GPR survey showed some kind of anomalies. By that time, the mosque was dismantled, demolished. So it showed some kind of anomalies. Anomalies mean below this means, below this one, below the mosque, you have a number of structures. And then when it was excavated, a number of structures came out. And now again, they started another work. Earlier, they had said that there are no structures. But now when they started, when they saw them in the structures coming out, they came up with another argument that it was a pre-Islamic structure. Had it been pre-Islamic structure means an Islamic structure before this one. Before the mosque, there was another mosque. And that was an Eidgah mosque. Eidgah mosque means during the this one, Eid days only, people will go and pray. So if you are getting these kind of images, sculptures from there, how can you say that these are an Eidgah mosque. These are earlier they were said now there are no structures beneath the one. But now they changed their goalpost also. Now they came out with another kind of argument. It was a pre-Islamic mosque. It was a pre-Mughal mosque. That was their argument. Uh, Dr. K.K. Mahmoud, thank you very much indeed.